Hello guys, this is Jim Collins and welcome to another episode of Journey to the Pit. Uh, today we have a special guest, Chris Self, that's coming on and we'll be taking a little different, uh, we'll have a different topic tonight. Um, the topic will not be about, you know, our typical or normal topic that we talk about every week, which is uh, conditioning and, you know, breeding and, and raising and worming and maintaining and stuff like that. Uh, the topic that we will have tonight uh, with Chris Self that's coming on is uh, he will be discussing uh, some of his experiences and encounters with law enforcement in regards to our sport as far as raids and that type of stuff. So I think this interview will be extremely valuable. I think the information will be great, but just understand uh, nobody's acting as an attorney. Uh, this information is not intended for legal advice. You have to get your own legal advice from your own attorney. Um, none of this information is to dictate the laws in your area. You have to, uh, you know, do your own research on your own laws in your area. Uh, Chris will just be speaking um, based on his experience um, with the law enforcement and a court system based upon a situation that any of us, you know, back in the day or whatever, even now or whatever, has um, may have came in encounter with. Um, again, all the opinions are respected of the individual. Um, Chris Self is not acting as a legal advisor. He's not giving any legal advice. Uh, he is just basing his uh, information based upon his own experience uh, and his own research. So just want to make that clear. Nobody's on here acting as a lawyer, um, as a legal advisor, um, or anything like that. You have to do your own research per your locality, per your state per your laws, and uh, do your own research. But I think Chris will open up a lot of eyes and bring a lot of things to our attention um, that, that I think uh, sometimes may be overlooked or sometimes may not be explored or even uh, sometimes not even thought about. So I think um, the information that we'll get today will be extremely valuable uh, because some of the cockers out there have ran into a situation just as being a breeder um, has gotten raided, all the animals have been killed, before due process and a lot of times we at the mercy of these attorneys and a lot of times these attorneys don't know more than we do and if we do it's like the blind leading the blind so hopefully this information uh will be uh extremely valuable i think it will be valuable uh god willing none of us will ever have to use any of this information but again it's education like i said educate inform inspire so tonight we hope to educate some inform the others and inspire everybody so um i sent the request out um for him to to uh be joining the video um it still hasn't uh request brought him in but chris will be coming on tonight um and like i said i think this information will be very good he talks about a lot of things that i never even heard about you know and and he talks about a lot of things that we have the rights to that if we do not know, we can't even ask. You know what I mean? And, and I think this is extremely important, especially as we're actually being convicted and rated based on what somebody consider an intent. I mean, what is an intent? You know, just because you have 50 or 100 roosters out in your yard, that means that you intend on doing something illegal with them. Well, that's how we're being treated. And hopefully uh, Chris Self tonight, based out of Florida, he can bring some light. Well, we can use his situation to bring some light um, to 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 bring some light to uh, uh, what our sport uh, has been uh, dealing with. Because again, a lot of us, or ninety nine percent of us, is being incriminated for stuff that we're not doing, um, and then we're forced uh, to plead guilty to something that we're not guilty of because they charge you with everything under the sun, hoping that it will get you to um, plead guilty to something that you're not guilty of, or they throw everything under the sun at you to convince the ignorant that you are guilty of something that you're not guilty of. And again, we always at the mercy of an attorney, and a lot of these attorneys are not well-versed in this topic, and the ones that are, are extremely expensive. So let me just see what's going on here. Why is it taking so long for Chris to come in? Um, guys, out there, if you are out there, please do not request... Uh, to be on the video because we're waiting for our special guest to come on and I got guys requesting to be added to the video Please don't request to be added to the video. We're trying to get Chris in here um, It's taking a little bit of time. I don't know why but you know, we go through this every week You know, but uh, if y'all guys are just joining in um, 
I appreciate y'all guys being here. Um, hopefully, again, we can educate some of y'all, inform some of y'all, and inspire everyone. Um, I think this information, once we get Chris in here, his life experiences um, has been, has been, you know, very uh, eye-opening. And I think, um, like I have always been saying from the beginning, education is our first line of defense. If we don't know what our rights are, or if we don't even know where to go look for to educate ourselves on what our rights are, we at the mercy of whoever, our lawyer, the DA's office, the animal rights group, you know, we at the mercy of everybody. So um, I think, like I said, with this information, um, it will be extremely valuable because what it's going to do is I know it's going to get us some of, the, some of our minds turning and spinning. We're going to get on our phones and we're going to start researching stuff and looking at things. And we're going to be like, hold on now, this is not, wow, I didn't know this. And you're going to start learning. We got a lot of rights, you know, but by us not knowing and by us not being educated on a lot of things uh, that uh, uh, not being educated on our rights, we are like a sitting ducks. So we make their job ex just way too easy. Um, it's not fair. Uh, we get treated very unfair. They handle us any kind of way because nine out of ten times we're very ignorant to the fact of what our rights are. So guys, just tune in. Bear with us for a second. I'm waiting for Facebook to uh, to um, you know bring us uh, bring Chris in. I already sent out the request. I don't know what is taking so long. Um, I don't know what's taking so long for him to for Facebook to send him a request. And again, guys, if you are watching, please do not request. Uh, to come in to the video because it's it's causing uh, Chris, our special guest, not to get the invitation. It's like putting him in the back of the line. So again, please do not uh, request to get into to be added to the live video. I'm trying to wait for Chris to get in here. Um, this is his first time. Chris and I has been talking a lot, had some very very deep conversations about a lot of different things. And like I say, I'm I'm guilty of it too. Um, it's a lot of things that he taught me that I didn't know. And, uh, and, 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 and it opened up my eyes to make me start getting on the computer and doing some research myself and starting to scratch my head. And then once you start doing that research, you start scratching your head like, now how are they doing these things to us? This is a totally violation of our rights. We're not even talking about the laws. You know, these guys are coming and raiding houses with not having, with, with just the word intent. Oh, he has the intent. And then they just come in the house and kill all of your chickens and there's no repercussions to that. Um, and it's a lot of things that he's going to turn on, turn us on to as far as what their protocol should be, or at least some questions to ask to find out what their protocol should be. Um, because once we start letting them know that we're just as educated or maybe even more educated than they are, these guys are going to start to say, hold on, before we go and raise somebody's house, we need to make sure that all our T's are crossed. And all our eyes are dotted because we don't know if this is going to be one of those game foul breeders that knows his rights. So they need, they're going to make sure that they do every single thing that they're supposed to do. Um, and, and again, a lot of times we are our own worst enemy because we kind of convict ourselves because of the lack of education that we have um, about it. So again, I don't know who keep putting up angry faces. I don't know what the angry faces are for. I don't know if it's what I'm talking about or we got somebody on this live stream that shouldn't be on this live stream. Um, I'll find out, though, once the video is over. Guys, I am uh, trying to get Chris in here. And and he's been... Uh, got Chris trying to get Chris in here. Kind of messes up. We had some people that tried to join a, the live stream and it knocked him out, out of line. And now it doesn't even seem like he's even getting a notification. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, just bear with me for a second. You know, um, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, so let's see here. Guys, if anybody are is friends with uh, Chris Self, if you can send him a message and let him know that um, the Facebook message has been Facebook invitation has been sent. But guys, if y'all just joining in, like I say, we got Chris Self coming on tonight. Um, he's from Florida. Uh, he's he's a game foul breeder. Um, he was a part of a raid, and he learns a lot about being a part of that raid. You know, it's a lot of. He said it was an eye opener for him, and it actually put him on a mission. Um, because he realized that he was going through the process that they were doing him so wrong. He started scratching his head like, hold on. I don't think this is right. 
But at the time, he probably didn't have a whole lot of education about it. So he started to get educated about it. And now that he's educated about it, he realized that they dropped the ball on a lot of things. They did a lot of things wrong. They, they didn't do a lot of things that they were supposed to do. So just imagine if Chris had all this information at that time and he was educated on it. That's why I think it's extremely important that we, let me see if I can share this with him, that we get ourselves educated. Yeah, the invitation is sent. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, yeah, it says the invitation has been sent. Facebook got a chokehold on us here. Um, Yep, I can't even resend it. Yeah, so it's been sent. So, Will, only thing I can say is we just have to wait. Um, we just have to wait to see what happens. Because I don't understand why it's taking Facebook so long to bring him in. Um, but again, guys, if y'all want to just hang around for a little bit until uh, Facebook brings him into this live feed. Um, I don't have another way to contact him to let him know the invitation. But he's sitting by his phone. We already did the test. The audio is good. The video was good. I hung up with him three minutes before uh, 9 o'clock to make sure that everything was good to go. Uh, he got his earphones on. Um, and uh, see, guys, please do not try to join the video. We have another person trying to join the live stream. This is really knocking Chris down the line. Please do not try to join the live stream. We're trying to get Chris in here. Um, yeah, so we're trying to get Chris in here. But like I say, guys, let me, um, I'm just trying to see if I can get Chris in here. Um, yeah, guys, I'm sorry about this, but I'm just trying to see if I can get Chris in here uh, on this live stream. I just put him in the comment section, hopefully. Um, if anybody's friends with Chris... Uh, please just uh, tag him in his video or share this video to Chris Self. C R I mean C H R I S Self S E L F. Maybe if y'all guys can share this share this live stream with him, he'll be able to come on. Because again, I can't even resend him an invitation because his invitation is still uh, it doesn't allow me to cancel it and resend it. So if anybody's friends with Chris Self, uh, please like I say, send him a a share this video with him so he can get on in here. If not, I'm going to have to start it all over again, which is going to suck, but I might have to just start it all over again. But guys, remember, do not request uh, to be in the live stream because you're knocking Chris out of line as far as being able to, to chime in. Um, I don't know why it's taking so long. I told him sometimes it takes five or ten minutes. It shouldn't take that long, but it does. Um, I don't know how long we've been on, so we'll see. We'll just give it a little, a few more minutes. Um, and if not, then I'll, I'll definitely have to uh, restart it. I'll delete this video and then I'll just restart the video again with him in it. But again, if anybody is friends with Chris Self, please uh, send him an uh, invite um, or share the video with him so that uh, he can be added to it. Because Facebook, I sent the video to him and um, I mean, I sent the invitation to him and it's not allowing uh, him to come in. It said it's sent. Um, this is kind of the same situation we had with uh, Clark AK-47 uh, the other night. It took him. It took us about four tries to get uh, Clark in. So I don't know. Um, Chris, internet is good. The audio is good. The video is good. We checked it three minutes uh, before we started this live stream. He was just. He's just sitting there at the desk on standby. I sent the invitation, and for some reason, um, uh, for some reason, it's not bringing him in. Wow, I just so wish we had our own little platform we can do live streams on. Um, Jeff, if you're watching, if you can send... Let me see here. Guys, I don't know what else to do. Um, it won't allow me to send him another invitation. The invitation is still there. So let's, you know, invitation is still there. I don't know what else to do. I'm sorry for this, but it's not my platform. Yep, it's not my platform, but guys, y'all not gonna wanna miss this interview. I tell you that right now. It's gonna be an awesome interview, and Chris is gonna open up your eyes to a lot of things that is not happening 
that needs to happen. He's going to open your eyes on how a lot of people are not doing their job. They're in a rush to arrest somebody. They're in a rush to convict somebody. They're in a rush to, con to, to accuse somebody. But they are sure not in a rush to do all their paperwork, follow all their protocol, and do everything right that they were supposed to be doing. So Chris is going to talk about that, and I think we will all will learn from Chris's experience, and he's learned from his experience. So, um, guys, it looks like I might just have to. Looks like I might just have to exit out of this video because it's it's not even allowing me to. It's not allowing me to to bring him in, and I don't know what else to do. But I'm telling you right now, this is going to be. I promise you tonight. If you never learned anything from the other videos that we had about the breeding, the care, the raising, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Jeff, if you can do that, I appreciate it. See if you can get them on. Let them know that we in here. But for some reason, it doesn't even look like um, it, it says on my end he has the invitation. So I don't know if he's just not getting it on his end or what. Um, but if somebody can try to reach out to him, that'd be great. We kind of want to get him in here, get this thing rolling. You know, we had a lot of views up. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. This, you know, we can't be frustrated. We just got to be patient. We got to work around it. You know, we, we're, we're using somebody else's platform. We got to make the best out of it. But I, I, I promise you it would be worth it after you hear this guy talk tonight about his, his experience with being a part of a raid and how the legal system did him and how he went through his whole court system and what he used to, to deal with it and where he's at right now. I'm telling you, you're going to be scratching your head. And you're going to sit back and say, how many other, you know, how many of us uh, could have done the same thing if we'd known it? You know, but Chris has put in a lot of work. He has done a lot of research and he's kind of the go to man. Anybody in Florida that that deals with a situation like this, um, he's the guy that they call a lot of times. He's definitely the guy uh, uh, that they call. And like I say, he has some um, amazing information. An amazing part about this is. Is this guy's giving us all this information for free? Uh, he's taking his time to share this information with us after he did all his research. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Juan. I appreciate you sending him a text. Uh, see if he can. Yeah, that'd be great. See if he can. Uh, if he can join on in. But but like I was saying, this guy has done hours and hours and hours of research, and uh, and uh, he's he's going to come on here. And open our eyes to a lot of things. And then it's our responsibility to go back and do our own research. And see how this stuff applies to us in our own state. Um, but, uh, you know, and then again, you can kind of take it from there. Because he's not up here trying to be no legal advisor. He's not no attorney. He is just uh, opening our eyes to you know, shedding some light on his situation. And I'm pretty sure we can all learn something from it. Um, if not. If he doesn't come on in, I don't really know what to do because I don't have much else to say besides the fact that we waiting, um, we waiting on him to come on in. Um, I don't know what's going on. I know he's sitting at that table. He's sitting in his cock house right now uh, at the table, um, has good lighting, has good connection, has good everything. We just wait for Facebook to send him a no, a, 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 a for him to receive his invitation because on my end it says that his invitation has been sent so uh chris hell uh chris self from florida man is going to open up our eyes uh to what happened to him when he was a part of the raid how he dealt with it what he learned from it and how he deals with situations now uh moving forward and i think it's something that we can all learn um obviously y'all guys know that i'm in puerto rico still um so i don't have my uh i don't have my flags uh in the background um, I will be getting a set. I'll be getting two sets, a Puerto Rican flag and American flag, uh, for, uh, for when I do these live streams from Puerto Rico. So y'all guys probably won't know the difference soon where I'm at. But anyway, guys, like I say, let's, uh, wait for, uh, Chris to, um, and you know, another thing too, uh, Chris has his phone on do not disturb. And that could be a reason uh, why he is not receiving the invitation. He has his phone on Do Not Disturb. So that means he's probably not even uh, receiving notifications. Didn't think about that. Um, wow. And we got a lot of views already, guys. 
you know, we got a lot of people that already then came on. We, don't, we was up to about 80, 90 people already watching. I know some of y'all guys is then tuned out or whatever, but um, uh, yes, yes, uh, Mrs. Mr. Collins, uh, Chris is on on Facebook, and it's Chris Self, C H R I S S E L F. Um, but like I said, I think he has his. I know for a fact he has his phone on Do Not Disturb because he didn't want any interruptions. Uh, doing this interview um, But don't worry guys We're going to get it done We always get it done You know we, we have a little issues every week But we get these things done Because we don't quit There's no quitting in here We'll get it done If I got to hang it up and, and restart it Then that's what we'll do But at the end of the day Y'all will get this information at night Here you go Here you go Okay we got him Here you go Alrighty Looks like he Let's see what happens here and I appreciate y'all guys hanging in there. Uh, Facebook says right now that they are adding him. There we go. There we Hey, man, what happened, man? You didn't get the invitation? <laughs> no, I just got it now. Oh, you just? <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I, I was running out of stuff to talk about, man. That was the thing about it. I was running out of stuff. To... <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to have to restart it, but I was like, hey, guys, listen, I appreciate y'all hanging in there, but I'm running out of stuff to talk about. But listen, Chris, I already said the disclaimer, and I'm going to go ahead and say it again while you're on there. I also typed it in the, in the description. But all the information discussed in this interview is for historical, educational, and entertainment pur purposes only. Uh, none of this information is in intended for any illegal purposes. Uh, none of this information is intended for to be e any illegal advice. Um, uh, Chris and myself is not acting as an attorney. We are not providing any legal information. Um, you have to do your own research based on your locality, based on your, uh, you know, your state, your laws, and all that kind of stuff. You have to do your own information. Chris is just on here today to shed some light on his life experience being a part of a raid. So, um, so now that we got the disclaimer out of the way, Chris, I introduced you already. We can kind of, it seems like you got some dogs or something in the background, huh? Uh, my, my roosters. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, listen, Chris, let's go ahead and get right into it, man. Um, what I would like to do is, one, you, you based out of Florida, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So you based out of Florida. And, and it's okay to say that the fact that you was, was uh, 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 in a situation where you was a part of some type of raid. If you can kind of tell us a little bit about what that situation was about to get us started. Yeah, well, it was rated back in uh, December 26, 2015, and okay. uh, we learned a lot from that. <laughs> you know, okay. I wish I knew what I knew now, but um, one of the things that I, that I learned, you know, the cops, they don't care about your rights. You know, they absolutely mm -hmm. do not care about your rights. Um, they, uh, to make a long story short, they went in and they raided us. It was 48 of us, and um, there's a couple pictures I wanted to show people that's, that's pretty important because if you don't speak English – and the officers have a canine, they will put them on you. And that's uh, mm -hmm. the incident that we had happen with two men, you know, uh, elderly men. This is one picture. Wow. Wow. Now, unfortunately, that uh, that gentleman, he pled guilty. Okay. He never played, and what did he, he plead guilty played, to? Uh, spectating and baiting, I believe. Either that or uh, okay. I was trying to I was trying to get some of his public records. Is either that, but they reduced the charges down into a, a illegal congregation in a private property. Okay, okay, illegal yeah. congregation on private property. Yeah, that that was the final uh, <laughs> plea deal that they gave us. You know, and I brought up the fact to the state attorneys uh, um, that you know that's already a constitutional violation. We have the right to assemble freely within a private mm -hmm. property. I mean, even, even out in, pl in public, you could do that. You know, mm -hmm. so it, mm -hmm. it, it's just a back and forth game that they try to play with you. That's why it's very important to know what your rights are because, you know, you end mm -hmm. up on an even playing field with them. You know, you want to see mm -hmm. your lawyer and your state attorney eye to eye. You don't want to look from the bottom up. And that's, uh, right. that's why edu education is very important, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second... Wow, and that is a canine bite. Yeah. Now, the reason he was bit in the stomach was because he had open-heart surgery um, some months prior. So he understood English. They told him to get down, and he lay down on his back. He was trying to explain to them 
I can't lay on my chest. Well, the dog started kind of sticking him on, going, let the dog go. The dog bit him in the stomach. That, wow. uh, that gentleman, too, he played out, too. <laughs> wow. Yep. Wow. So tell me something, Chris. What is the penalty for illegal conjugation on private property? What's the penalty for it? Yes. Um, it, it was, uh, what it was, uh, it, it's a misdemeanor. I'm not sure what degree it mm -hmm. was because, because uh, honestly, mm -hmm. I mean, from the get go, um, me and uh, several other, others, I mean, we stayed together fairly well. Like I said, there's 48 okay. of us, and out of uh, 48 of us, 41 um, pled out. They pled out, sticking huh? Together, yeah, sticking together is very important. Um, but what it was is uh, like a $200 fine. You know, it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. So we went from right. third degree uh, spectating baiting. That's a Florida State violation, the, uh, the 828. Um, okay. That was a maximum penalty of five years. That's what they was uh, trying to push on us was the five years for the judge to give us the max. Okay. If we was okay. found guilty. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so they try to uh, 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 scare you into the fact that, hey, you're looking at five years or you can plead out and take this $200 fine. Yeah, one of the things that I made sure to do um, whenever I retained a lawyer, um, you know, your, your lawyer works for you. You don't work for them. So you have the right, right. to demand certain things from them. So one thing that I, that I told my lawyer that, that I wanted from him is for every time that there's a, a phone conference between the state attorneys and him, I wanted to be in that, in that conference, that phone conference. And he didn't agree okay. with it. Um, but we, we, we got it done. It got really interesting. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Learned a mm -hmm. lot. So, Chris, tell me something. Why didn't you think he wanted you inside those on, uh, uh, participating in those conference calls? Well, 99% of bad lawyers make that makes a 1% look good. So most lawyers, it's easier for a plea deal. And uh, this is why it's real good to look, look into your lawyer and, and look at their background. You know, how many cases was uh, uh, resolved through plea deals? How many actually went to trial? Um, you know, how many convictions they had, that's very important, too, because you can have a lawyer that did 100 cases, but if he has more than half or three-quarters of them, you know, with convictions, mm -hmm. you don't want that guy or woman. That's right. Or. That's right. That's right. That's right. So tell me something, Chris. So tell me this. Let's talk about a little bit about, because I know we had discussed personally uh, between you and I, you know, uh, uh, somebody coming, because we all know they're raiding people, game foul breeders, houses. <laughs> And they're just yeah. confiscating and killing all the animals without even, you know, without even like them even being guilty. They kill the animals like instantly and there's no repercussions. So, you know, from your experience and from the research that you have done, is it, is it some things or some ideas you can give the guys to kind of look into or, or kind of educate themselves on that God forbid they ever run into a situation like that getting raided just because they have birds in the yard? Yeah. Yeah, because like in, in uh, my instance, in my case, um, whenever they came in, uh, they started euthanizing the animals. And then euth euthanization is, is a very clean word. They actually, you know, it's better for us to start saying that they kill them because that's what they do. They don't euthanize them. That's just a nice word. So I'm right. trying to get that out of my vocabulary too. But, you know, but they went right. in, they killed them within the first 30 minutes. So um, the one thing that I did ask uh, one of the officers that was processing us at the scene was for mm -hmm. order destruction. Order destruction is very important. It has to be court ordered. Okay. 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 So whenever I asked for the for the order of destruction, they said that they had one, and it, and it was signed by a judge. So I said I need to see it. So they asked me if I'm okay. claiming the animals. I told them, yeah, I'm claiming I'm going to claim my animals, and uh, they never provided it to me. So um, as soon as they kill your your animals, it becomes a due process issue. So it's kind of like you know, like here in Florida, if you're driving down the road and an officer says, hey, you know, and they pull you over and they believe that you're under the influence, they're going to tell you, you know, I want to conduct a field sobriety test on you or a breathalyzer. If you refuse. You're most likely going to be arrested. They're going to impound your vehicle. So, right. so imagine they impound your vehicle, they take it to the tow yard, and they crush it. Okay, that's already a right. due process issue because it's innocent until proven guilty. So by them right. killing your animals, it's, there's, that's already a problem. You know, you haven't right. been adjudicated guilty yet. And right. um, that's what became, you know, this, I mean, it's, it's a, it was a, a hell of a learning process for us. Right. You that's know? right. So tell me something, Chris. So they came in, they killed your animals in the first 30 minutes. So to explain to us a little bit about what you said, that, that first thing you requested, you know, the, the order of destruction. Explain to us yeah. what an order of destruction is. Uh, order of destruction is going to be, um, 
what is, is basically what's going to be done with the animals. You know, um, there's, there's usually a provision for every state um, as far as destroying animals. Um, the first thing that, that they're supposed to do is try to rehouse them, whether it's through a humane society, even their own department, or if they have a facility to keep them, you know, to take them out of the property. Mm -hmm. um, second mm -hmm. option is to keep them on the premises. You're going to keep housing them and feeding them, but under the guidance and the watch of the sheriff department, they're going to take an inventory of every bird. They're going to take photographs. And if anything is to happen to the animals, you're supposed to report it that something, one died or one disappeared or whatnot. Third option for them, which is the easiest and the fastest one that, that's easier for them to do is to kill them. You know, and usually they do it under the, you know, under the umbrella of disease, you know, the bird is disease. Well, there's a problem with that too, because even under that provision, the blood test has to be done. There has to be some kind of, you know, scientific evidence behind it or something, some uh, laboratory work showing that these mm -hmm. birds are diseased. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what the order of destruction is. So tell me yeah. something. So um, how, is, is it a timeline? that they need to provide you with that order of destruction or they just need to confirm that they have it? They're, they're supposed to have it on hand. Um, you know, it's a, it ends up being a public record and they have to show it to you, you know, because you have the right to claim your property. And uh, usually okay. once you, you claim your property, they're supposed to have a 30-day, you know, I think Florida is a 30-day uh, statue mm -hmm. to, okay. to have a property hearing to see, to see what's going to be done with the animals. And okay. Usually, usually that doesn't happen here. Usually they just come in because what, what it is, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Gamecock farmers, they, they allow them to come in. So it becomes just like this vicious cycle and they let them take them and kill them, take them and kill them because they don't want to get right. in trouble. And, That's uh, right. So it, it's just a normal thing for them. You know, it's like clockwork. Right. Because it, it never get disputed. That's the problem a lot of times. It, it never gets disputed. So if it doesn't get disputed, it becomes habit. And if it becomes yep. habit, it becomes acceptable in a judicial system, correct? Yes, it is. That's it's, al it's almost yeah. like insurance companies. They run around here denying everybody, and they can wrongfully deny everybody, but if they deny everybody long enough, wrongfully deny everybody long enough, it just becomes business as usual. So when you try to debate, yep. it's like, what are you talking about? I already denied 95 roofs in your, in your, in your community. I'm, you're just 96, yep. and that's pretty much it. Okay, so they got the order that's a destruction. You ask them, okay, you have raided my house. Is there any particular thing as far as like warrants or anything like that that we should ask for if they ever come to our home? Absolutely. One, the, the, the one thing I have to touch on, you have to stay calm with them and do not fight with them. You got to remember, they're, they're the king of the streets out there. No matter how much mm -hmm. you fight with them, you know, they're, they're still the big brother over you. And it doesn't That's get right. you nowhere. You know, and we've right. seen some people arguing within the 48 of us. Some of them, some of them they're, they're arguing with the cop. You know, and uh, right. that, you have to stay cool with it because the thing is, you can have a pretty good idea of what you want to say. And as soon as you let your temper get to you, you're going to forget everything. And you're going to start, you know, saying a lot of stuff that you should not be saying. You have no reason That's right. to, to That's justify right. anything to them. Just keep it basic and keep it moving. Okay, so, so tell yeah. me this, Chris. So is it, is, it, is it much talking that we need to be doing at all? Like what is it, it, from your experience that you have learned? Yeah. Did you do too much talking? Did you not do enough talking? You know, what was your situation? Well, I didn't do a lot of talking because the more you talk, the more, you know, you could probably, you're probably probably going to say something that's going to incriminate you. Um, mm -hmm. So you want to keep it reduced down. So, I mean, you, you always want to ask for your search warrant. You want to mm -hmm. make sure that your time, your date, the location, um, places to be searched, you know, because they have, they have limits to what they can search. If they're looking for a shotgun, there's no reason for them to look inside of a shoebox because the shotgun's not going right. to fit in the shoebox. So, you know, that's why that's I'm right. going to keep saying, you know, throughout, throughout this uh, interview, we need to get educated. We right. Need to get educated. Right. Once you learn all that stuff, you become, you know, a, a pretty good weapon against them. And you, and, you're the um, first line of defense, correct? Yes. Yes. You know, because, I mean, your lawyer, you, you're going to get a hold of them after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, and the worst thing to do is, is to is to be a breeder for, for many years. You have a, a solid bloodline. Um, you don't throw it out everywhere. Then they come in and they kill your birds. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm not saying that this is going to keep them from killing them, but it, mm -hmm. you have a pretty good chance that you're going to you're going to hold them back. You know, and that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Our things that we have to slow them down, asking for a search mm -hmm. warrant. You know, they, uh, mm -hmm. they do no knock search warrants. They just come and they knock on the door. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to talk to them. You know, you lock your door, right. you tell them, you got a search warrant? No, bye. Keep moving. Right. Um, 
and, uh, and if, if they have probable cause to go into your house, they're not going to come and knock. They're going to come and, you know, they're going to knock your door in. Tear the door down. Yeah, right. They're going to come absolutely. and tear the door down. And they're not going to have mm -hmm. no problem with it. Yeah. Okay, so Chris, so, so okay, situation happened. You know, they came to your house. You asked them for a search warrant. Did they have a search warrant? Yes. Okay, yeah. then the, the next thing you, 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 you may need to request is an order of destruction. Now, do you ask them for order of destruction straight from the gate, or do you ask them for an order of destruction when you start seeing them trying to take some animals out of there? Well, well what made it come to my mind was whenever I started seeing the animal control show up, and I started seeing them, you know, getting that syringe ready to start, it, to start killing them, and then it, right. it, it popped up in my head. I said, I need to ask for order of destruction, you know, because there has to mm -hmm. be um, – a judge has to sign for that. Okay? Right. They usually don't leave that in the hands of the officers. It's usually directed by a judge. That'd be court order. Okay. Okay. And who would and who who you think? Because again, we don't know none of this for a fact because we're not a lawyer. But who typically would have that? Would it be the animal control showing up with order destruction, or would it be a police officer showing up with order destruction? Like who would? T is that something that they usually bring with them, or is that something that you got to request and get from the courthouse once you get out of jail? Them documents they're going to have to have on hand. Um, depending on your animal control, um, the issue we have with, with our animal control out here is that um, our county doesn't have animal control. So what they do, mm -hmm. they, uh, they bid it out, and they kind of hire the, the local city to come to our area. So there, it's the city okay. of Liston. So they're subcontracted okay. to, to do that, and they don't have no law enforcement powers, They nothing. They're just basically... You know, they're not even animal control. They're dog catchers and cat catchers. That's really all they are. They okay. Well, tell me this, Chris. That's what, well, we already know that. Before you, they started to dress like them, too. If you really see them, they got the, they got the tactical khakis now. And they, got the, they got the tactical boots now. You know what I mean? They got yeah. the polos tucked in with the tactical belt. They really just trying to create their whole uniform and try to put that presence on like they're law enforcement, and they really not. Um yeah. So, Chris, who was it? Was it the SPCA, HSUS? Who came to your house? Like, who, who initiated this whole situation? Well, it, it, it all started with a confidential informant. That's how we ended up okay. where, in the position we ended up. We ended up getting raided. But as far as the animal control, they're just local uh, animal control officers. But okay. um, the, the lady that, that was there with the other guy, um, she was actually – uh, indoctrinated by the ASPCA, she held a lot of certifications with them for uh, animal fighting, okay. animal cruelty prevention, and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, so they okay. got to her, and they, 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 they really tuned her up pretty good. Right, right. So she came. With, so was she? Was she on site? Like, was she one of the people that that came to the house? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep, so she, she was one of the them. people. Oh, she came in with them. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so, and, and I hate to keep repeating this, but I just want to kind of take this thing step by step as we going through, because we got some, you yeah. know, new guests that's coming on and that kind of stuff. So, boom, they show up to the house. You ask them for a warrant. They supply you with a warrant. Um, once yeah. you see the uh, animal control truck showing up, you say, "Hey, I need to, you know, ask for order of destruction because there's a possibility that they might start trying to kill my animals, and I want to yeah. make sure they have the legal documentation and authorization." from the necessary person to start killing. I ain't going to say euthanizing, killing my animals. Okay. So at that time, did they have a letter of destruction? They never provided it to me. And I asked for it multiple times. And, uh, and the lady that, that was processing us, she said, we have it signed by a judge. I said, well, you need to supply it to me. And she says, I don't need to right. have it, but they're supposed to. You know, it's the same thing like a search warrant. It's like, like if they said, well, we have a search warrant, um, but we don't have to show it to you. You, you have to. You have to. Right. You know, if and they what's about to. that. Yep. Right. I mean, because that's that's your legal right. I mean, if somebody said, I'm going to yep. come and kill your dog, well, I need to, why are you killing my dog? Oh, because somebody signed and said, I can kill it. Well, let me see the document. I think I have the right to at least see the document and see why. Yeah. So, so tell me this, Chris, to go back to like you just said about the euthanization. They have a couple of little loopholes or techniques or angles they try to take. And one of them is the disease type deal. So yeah. they wouldn't actually, I mean, and, and again, this is just, I'm asking a question based on an opinion uh, or, mm -hmm. or, or an experience, an experience. I guess that's a better way to, to word it. Um, yeah. They wouldn't be able to have an order of destruction if they're killing your animals based on disease, right? 
they would have to get that order destruction after they test the animals to make sure they got a disease, correct? Yep, correct. Okay, so in the situation... Correct. Okay, so let's go through this again. So they come to your house. They may mm -hmm. not have an order destruction on hand, but if you yeah. question them and say, hey, where's your order of destruction? Um, then I guess if they don't have one, then they shouldn't be killing any animals right then and there, correct? Correct. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you something very interesting about that order of destruction. Um, okay. We was, ne we was never supplied with it. Um, you know, and I'm going to jump forward a little bit through our case. After we uh, had our charges dismissed, um, we, we, uh, we went ahead and we retained a, a civil lawyer. So okay. now it took us about a year and a half to actually, mm -hmm. to actually obtain that order of destruction. Even as many times as I'd done uh, public records requests, they never had one, and uh, it took a year and a half. To obtain wow. That. So tell me this, Chris. When you obtained it a year and a half later, and this, now let me get this correct. Did they kill all the animals? Yep. <laughs> everything. So, Even so they, uh, the, the layer hens and everything, the, the little kikiris, everything. <laughs> they killed everything the first day they showed up. Yep, and we had some hens and, laying in the nests, and they, uh, this was probably about two, three days out from uh, hatching, and they crushed the eggs. They, they killed the hen, crushed up the eggs. Wow. So tell me this. So when you got that order of destruction, when was it dated? Was it dated the day or a couple days before the raid, or was it, you know, like, when was the order of destruction dated? Okay, it was raided on the 26th, and... um. And they're supposedly signed on the 23rd, uh, 23rd three days prior. So <laughs> they already knew what, what they wanted to do three days prior. They're, I mean, there's no animal going to walk out of their life, anything with feathers at least. So tell me this, Chris. Does it state on an order of destruction why they, why they was able to get an order of destruction without even the animals being tested? Because obviously if they had this already signed three days before they raided, how did they even know the animals had disease, or what bases did they use to kill your animals? Um, one of the things that they stated on there, and this is probably the, the most important one, um, they said the, that the animals are, are too dangerous to be rehomed re and uh, okay. where to practically keep them, you know, because they're saying they're, they're used oh. for fighting. Okay, 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 okay. All right, I just kind of wanted to make that clear. So, again, um, these are some things that, that, you know, we need to be definitely educated about. Um, so tell me this, Chris. Yeah. So we got the order of destruction. It was signed three days. It was signed on the 23rd. You got raided on the 26th. Um, and, uh, it took you 18 months to, uh, recover a copy of the order of destruction, correct? Yep. You got, you, you got the order of destruction and the order of destruction read the date was the 23rd, three days prior to the raid. And it also the justification for the judge to sign it on there was uh, animals. D just to say that one more time, what was the justification to get the order of destruction? That they couldn't be uh, rehomed because Re it was uh, basically raised and bred for, for fighting. So that there wouldn't okay. be really no use for them, you know, to society. Okay. So, Chris, in your experience, and I'm just saying in your experience, not speaking on legal terms, in your experience, did you find any research that can um, that gave them a, the legal or the lawful right to categorize those animals of that without them even coming in contact with the animals or even evaluating the animals? Did you find anything that can kind of contradict what they did throughout your research? Yeah, well, um, just to not even go like as far as even them killing them. It's just it's, it becomes a due process issue. You know, okay. because before they can even take much action, um, if, if your animals, if they say they're going to be real weak, they're at the verge of dying and stuff, they're, they're going to kill them. But there still has to be paper trail. There has to be photos. Okay. There has to be, you know, there has to be documents. And then mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the problems is that they're, they're getting too, too used to going in and just killing birds. And then that's where people like us, whenever we learn, we take advantage of it. And that's, you know, your that's first right. line of defense. They wasn't expecting that's us. Right you know, to, to hold up a courtroom, 48 of us pleading not guilty. And mm -hmm. I mean, that stops up the, the judicial system pretty bad. Mm -hmm. and, right. I mean, it even got to the point that the judge was mad because they offered a, a majority of us, probably about uh, three quarters of us, a diversion program. And all a diversion program is if you don't have a bad record, um, 
you plead guilty temporarily for the time. You uh, you complete mm -hmm. whatever terms and conditions that they ask. It might be, um, you know, probation. It might be certain things. Mm -hmm. And uh, and with that, they want us to donate like five hundred dollars to animal rights or animal society and stuff like wow. that. Wow. We, we refused that. Um, they wasn't happy with that because uh, the state attorney even told our lawyers, like, does your clients understand this is a diversion program? If they complete this, you know, they're, they're clean and they're, you know, they're not going to be prosecuted for it. You know, it's like your, your, your one time deal to get out of jail, you know, or at least to clean, mm -hmm. keep your record clean. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, thank God uh, everybody said no. And the judge got really mad and he told the state attorney, uh, he told her, he said, you better do something very quick because this is not looking good on your part. And um, he said that the next time that they bring a person in there with a chicken under their arm or something about a chicken, that he's mm -hmm. going to dismiss the cases or send it up to the second floor, which is a misdemeanor. He'll reduce the charges down to a misdemeanor because he didn't, he didn't want mm -hmm. that in his courtroom. <laughs> wow. So you yeah. know what? I mean, listen, Chris, and I hate for you to repeat this stuff, but I think we need to drive this information home because that's extremely important because we have a perception that Every judge that we stand in front of is just going to throw us under the bus immediately and not hear anything. But you're telling me from your experience, the judge wasn't yeah. playing that kind of game that day. He did not want to hear that crap. He didn't want to hear no weak animal case that's coming up, that's been trumped up by some lunatic that's coming up in there. And the sad part about it is how are they going to make a part of your punishment donating money to some nonprofit organization that don't even donate money to the local shelter? So, uh, like, how, yeah. how, how is the court system forcing you or giving you an option, plead guilty or send some money to these people over here, and I'll let you off the hook? So just to go back to what you said, again, um, yeah. the, when the judge, when, when y'all guys said, I am not taking a diversion program, mm -hmm. he letting us know that he back there. I hear him back there. <laughs> Listen, he... It, it, <laughs> so... He said, listen, these guys are not taking a diversion program because obviously y'all guys didn't feel as though y'all was guilty of anything, correct? Mm -hmm. So so the judge said the next time you come into the courtroom, the next time you come into the courtroom, you better come in here with a solid case. I'm sending it upstairs. What was his what was his reply? Let just repeat it again. Oh that that uh <clears throat> Whenever we refuse, he said that the next time that somebody go goes in there with a chicken under their arm, it's just a saying. Um, either that or, or any mm -hmm. kind of a rooster case, anything has to do with that, that he's either mm -hmm. going to dismiss the charges or he's going to send it up to the second floor and reduce the charges down to a misdemeanor instead of it a third-degree felony. Wow. Because um, what it does is – So it, that's extreme. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, the court, the court system has a lot more – I mean, there's – I'm not going to say uh, what we're doing is a crime – but they will consider mm -hmm. it as a soft crime. You know, mm -hmm. it's not an act against anybody. So mm -hmm. you have, you know, hard crimes out there. You know, you have drug dealers. You know, mm -hmm. you have uh, gang members, car thieves. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you name it. So, so to us, we're not, we're, we're just like a soft criminal to him. And he doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure, and I'm, I'm not speaking for him, but what, what I've seen from him is that, um, you know, we're, we're in there for, for basically nothing, just because mm -hmm. of the law, I guess. And it clogs mm -hmm. up the court system. You know, he has real criminals to take care of him and get him through the judicial system. Not a bunch mm -hmm. of uh, cockfighters or nothing like that, you know. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so okay. And I hate to keep repeating this, Chris, but this information is extremely important. We don't know the next time you're going to be on here. So I just want to, yep. you know, I'm not trying to be redundant, but I think it's, it's, it's very important that they get this information from you and it's clear. So y'all yep. guys did not take the diversion program. So what happened after y'all did not take the diversion program? What happened next? Well, after that, they reduced the charges because um, the first thing they, they did was a diversion. That was the first plea deal. Then okay. whenever we refused that, they said, well, we'll reduce it down to second degree uh, misdemeanor, which was uh, animal cruelty. Okay. Which, I mean, didn't make much sense because we didn't take the diversion. Why are we going to take animal cruelty? You know, the diversion right. was the way out. That's escape door. Right. We didn't take it. So, um, right. so they offered that to us, and they said after this, there's no more plea deals. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's part of their, their tactics. You know, you got to remember, they got a toolbox. They're going to tell you everything. I mean, the state attorney even went as far as telling me, you know, how old is your son on, on our conference call with the lawyer? And I'm not saying, you know, mm -hmm. it's none of her business. I already know what, what direction she was going with that. And she says, you know, if we get you with five years, your son, you know, he's going to be 13 whenever you get out. 
I'm like, that's fine. So she, I said, but my son's going to know that, that, you know, his father was a real man and, you know, that I fought for something. That's and right. No, no, that's you right. Bow, you can't bow down to them. That's right. That's right. So you were willing to go to jail before you was going to plead guilty to something that you knew was a violation of your rights. And I was going to give up a state pension. I worked for a county um, certified firefighter. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. going to lose all, mm -hmm. my, uh, all my certificates for fire department. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this it's, it's, it's is going to be a, a pretty big loss for me. But, I mean, if, if you don't take the stand now and you plea out now, what are you going to do the mm -hmm. second time? It's going to be easier to plea out the second time. That's you know, right. And, and it's, you know, we, 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 can't, we can't be like that no more. You know, we can't be out there hiding and, and doing that stuff. You know, it, it hurts us more than anything. We're wasting valuable time. That's right. That's right. So, Chris, tell me this. You know, and that's why it's extremely important that you said it. And you're, you're, you, you lived it. You lived it. This ain't something that you read through a newspaper. This ain't something that your friend, you know, Fred or whoever down the street did. This is something that you were you were into, you were charged with, you was arrested for, you were taken to court for, and this is the situation that you've been in. So tell me this, Chris. Do you feel as though attorneys will also throw every charge they possibly can to see what sticks on you? Do you think all those yeah. things that they – okay. Yeah, you usually what they end up doing, um, you're gonna have an arrest charge. What they're gonna, you know, just stick to you for the moment to legally arrest you. And then mm -hmm. what they could do, they could add on more charges. Um, you know, if you claim animals, they can say, well, we're gonna give you one, uh, one charge or one count per animal mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, uh, raising animals with intent to fight and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what they end up doing, they end up going from one charge to let's say ten charges. So that's mm -hmm. part of their, 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 you know, their toolboxes of tricks. Um, and mm -hmm. then they're going to come with the, with the plea deal. They're going to say, okay, well, we have 10 charges against you. We're going to take away nine. We're going to be good guys. You know, we're going to just stick you with this because they need you to plea out. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, like the F FBI, you know, um, 80, I think it's 85% of them, you know, they have a, a pretty high conviction rate. It's probably about 80, let's say 85%. Mm -hmm. uh, probably about 83 of them is through plea deals. It's easy. Wow. Plea deals, wow. which reducing and say go, go on, you know, and it's and, it, and it's easy to do that. You know, I know everybody has different situations, and and some people lose more than another, but uh, you know, it's all a personal decision. I wish more people would uh, not plea out, right, um, and actually fight. You know, right. Uh, you know, I can't stress that enough. That's right. That's right. That's right. So so tell me this. So tell me this, Chris. So uh uh, uh we're down to the point where they offer you now this second part of the plea deal, which first first d plea deal was a diversion program. Second yep. offer was um, uh, animal cruelty. When you didn't accept that, then they come to you and say, well, I'm going to give you the maximum five years. Your son is X amount of years old. You're not going to see him until he's 13 years old. We threw all these charges at you, everything under the sun, and you're not folding. So we're about to see you to the chain game for five years. And I bet you, once you hear that, you're going to throw in the towel, right? That was, yeah. what, do, you, yeah. do you feel as though that's what they thought? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. You know, it, it's hard to be put in that situation. I mean, anybody that's been put in that situation, they could agree with me. It's not easy. You know, you're mm -hmm. talking about a lifelong decision. You know, um, I mean, uh, uh, most of us are gun owners. Most of us, mm -hmm. you know, we, we love our vote, our voting rights and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. stuff that they that, that you're gonna you're not gonna have. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna have no line of protection or nothing for your family. Mm -hmm. So it's something that that you know you have to think about. But at the end of the day. It's like we say, you know, you're going to live a dangerous freedom or a mm -hmm. peaceful slavery. I'd That's live right. The dangerous, the dangerous freedom. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and, and again, I'm not passing judgment on anybody because like you say, you know, you, you right. have to be in that situation. You got to make the best decision based upon uh, your situation. And uh, yeah. but but what I can say is the better educated you are increases your chances of not being back so far deep into the corner. You might be backed into the corner. But if the more educated you are, you won't be buried in a corner and you won't be so Absolutely. afraid. You know, you won't be so afraid and you won't be so quick to, to take a deal versus if you was educated. You'd be like, nah, I ain't got to take that right away because I know, you know, this this ain't going to be easy for them either. They ain't really got a solid case on me. So I ain't got to jump to the first deal. But if you're not educated and somebody say, I'm going to give you five years then you might say, you know what, I'll take that diversion program. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's what, yeah. a, that's what a lack of education. That's why I say that education, we are our first line of defense. And it's each of our responsibility to educate ourselves. 
you know, it's great that you're coming on. It's great that you came on a program. I extremely appreciate it because it's, it's, it's invaluable information. You're not giving everybody the answers, but what you are doing is you're shedding some light on areas that we need to educate ourselves on. Now it's oh, our responsive now it's our responsibility to go out there and start educating ourselves on those things that you brought to light. It ain't your responsibility. It ain't the show responsibility. We're shedding light on it, but it's still your responsibility to educate yourself. So you you get the second deal, you deny, I mean you you refuse to take the five year I mean the the, the deal with the animal um cruelty. You refuse yep. that. So what happened after that? Well, a couple months passed by, and uh, they go back to the diversion program again. <laughs> <laughs> they said, we're, we're going to have, after they tell us they're not going to give us, no, there's no more negotiation. Now, that's a bunch of lies. Right. They, they, lie, they lie a lot. Right. Um, so then they came back with the diversion program. So once you start seeing, like, this very erratic, um, you know, game playing with them, mm -hmm. you already know that there's a huge problem, you know. Because if they, if, if they really – could have prosecuted you they'll just stick to their guns and says hey guys you know Tom right there's no need that's, that's what i'm saying there's no need listen there's no need for plea deals if they can send you straight to the ch there's no need a 99 percent of the time either they don't want to put in the work or the case is not that solid if it's a reason why they give you a plea deal they don't know you from a yeah. can of paint they don't care about you or your family so you have to ask yourself why they even offer me a plea deal? They don't care about me. They don't care about my family, and they don't know me. So why are they giving me a plea deal? So, so again, is it the fact that they don't want to put in the work that it's going to take to convict you? Is it the fact that their case is not as strong as they thought? Is it the fact that they're not 100% sure that you might not be able to hire, that you may be able to hire a great attorney that will come in and shed some light on the fact that they didn't do their job? I mean, it's a bunch of possibilities yeah. there because they sure not doing yeah. it because they care about you and your son. Yeah, one of the things you always got to remember, you know, um, every time that, that, that they go in and they raid a, a property, you know, you got to kind of compare it to a motor. There's a lot of moving parts. You know, mm -hmm. if one piston goes out, it's going to miss, you know, the whole motor is going to start misfiring and, and bad stuff comes out of it. So as you look throughout your whole raid, your, your job is to pick out what they did wrong. And it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. That's why it's, it's very mm -hmm. important to know you know, something, you know, you don't have to know it all. Mm -hmm. I don't know it all, but I learned a little at a right. time. So that's how I learned about right. search warrant. You know, let me see a search warrant. Mm -hmm. Fine. Right there. Mm -hmm. uh, order of destruction. We don't have to show it to you. Big problem right there already. And then even after right. that, after, uh, after we got out, um, we was arrested on a Saturday. We got out on Sunday. So that following Monday, um, I went to animal control. Okay. To, uh, you know, get, get some documentation of what they did, you know, because there's provisions that they have to follow because, you know, every, everybody on animal control that can legally kill an animal, they have to work under a license, you know. So, okay. So I went there. So I went there and I asked for, uh, for a receipt, property receipt, uh, animals that they obtained. Um, mm -hmm. What did they use to kill him? Uh, what method? Where did they stick him? How many, you know, CCs did they put in him and all that mm -hmm. stuff? They had, they had not one record, not one record. So, See? you know, so, so this is what I'm saying. Uh, what, what has become of all these raids, it's like whenever we was, we was raided, it wasn't, the birds was like the way in, but they got really sloppy. And I'm going to tell right. you why they got really sloppy. Their main concern is not so much the birds. Animal control's main concern was the birds because they're animal right, you know, extremist terrorists. And that's all right. they was worried about. Now, law right. enforcement, what they was more worried about was drugs, gang activity, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. money, uh, mm -hmm. firearms, all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's why mm -hmm. they got really sloppy with our case because they went in, you know, they got us with birds, whatnot. They they were searching for, for drugs and guns. They did not find mm -hmm. not one bag of marijuana, not nothing. I mean, they found some right. money. Um, not one firearm. Right. And, uh, well, they found a couple of firearms. Right. But it's inside the house. They're, they're all legal. Um, right. And then that was it. And then whenever um, – um, to go back to the point with animal control, they didn't provide anything to me. So that's kind of strange, you know, because her being registered and she's killing these animals, she has to log all this stuff. And then I asked her where the animals was, and she said that once you, because uh, because years ago they used to throw them out in the in the landfills, and then animals used to come and mm -hmm. eat them, and then they'll die from it. So then there's a right. there's a, a a law put in that they had to be sent off and burned off in the incinerary. So she said, well, we send them off to the incinerary. Well. Prior to that, I was reading about stuff about evidence, and there's a thing called exfoliation 
of evidence. And that's whenever evidence is mm -hmm. destroyed. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I reached out to another lawyer, a criminal lawyer, that he worked some of these cases, and I asked him, you know, I said, look, you know, this situation, I mean, we, we got raided, um, they took my birds, they killed them, and stuff like that. I said, you know, where does exploitation of evidence, does that work within this case? And he said, absolutely. He says, you know, he worked a case like that, and um, in the same area we was at, uh, some guys was raided years ago, uh, probably 12, 13 years ago. So um, he represented them. So what he did, he went to the same animal control, but as a different animal control officer at the time. And uh, that was at the time whenever they was allowed to keep him in freezers. So he asked to mm -hmm. see the, the animals, and they had him held on site there, and um, took him to the deep freezer, opened the bag, and, you know, he found all the birds. But all the birds, you know, they're purple, they're stiff, mm -hmm. they look mm -hmm. like horrible. So mm -hmm. uh, animal control asked him, he says, well, you want to take him out and view him? He said, no, I've seen enough. And she's like, well, what, mm -hmm. you don't want to see him? He said, no, he says, because now this is the issue. Whenever we bring this out to trial and you hang up, a frozen bird, purple. They're gonna right. say that my that, that my client did that. He says, "But y'all are the one that did right. that to that animal, not him." That's so right. Then what it does, it doesn't that's give right. your client a fair trial. Mm -hmm. so that's why it's very important for them to keep the animals, because if they say mm -hmm. that that they're malnutrition, they're they're beat up or whatever, okay, we, mm -hmm. we have to prove that. We have to prove that. Right. You know, and that that's right. the issue with that. So it doesn't work. It doesn't right. work with you. And then as far as them killing off the birds, you know, clicked in my head. How can my lawyer fairly represent me if there's no evidence? You know, it's like, it's like if you have a kilo of cocaine in your house and the cops come in, they take a picture of it, and then they flush it down the toilet. You know, right. it doesn't make sense. They got to be able to bring it back out right. to evidence. That's right. That's right. That's right. So tell me something. So they said they burned your birds, correct? Yep. Yep. But no records. Okay. And they did with no records. So did they even they have the amount them. of birds that they... Wow. Wow. So tell me this, Chris. Did they even have a record of how many birds they took? Okay. This is going to be interesting. So whenever, whenever I obtain the discovery and all the pictures and everything that's supposed to come within your, your case, um, there's a DVD and, 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 you know, take it like this. They, they took 83 birds. You know, we have more than 83. We had over 100 birds there. So um, whenever, whenever I started going through all the pictures, I only seen 15 birds. Showed them alive. They took a picture of the wing tag. You know, we, we put our names under them and stuff, and mm -hmm, they took mm -hmm. pictures of them alive, and then and then whenever they killed them. But it is mm -hmm. a very small amount. I mean, we have over 100 birds, and they only had, like, pictures of 10. So where's the rest of the, you know, 90 pictures? That's a problem. Wow. So they're, they're saying that they, that they took 83, you know, and it was more, but we'll just stay at 83. Um, right. So, so all they really had was pictures of 10, and then there's 70, but there's no pictures or, or nothing there. But they're put in inventory, you know, that, that they took 83. But there's no photos so it's no, to back that up. There's no, it's no, no photos to back that up. So it's almost like them arriving at a crime scene that said it had, the guy had three guns and they got a picture of one gun, but they got him in a courtroom saying that you had three guns, but we only got a picture of one. That's unacceptable. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So tell me, Chris. You know, this is, this is, I think, like I say before when I started this video, this is going to be some eye-opening information. Um, you know, so Monday when you, Sunday you got out of jail, you went to the animal control on Monday, and when you went to the animal control on Monday, you requested a inventory of destruction. Is that the name of it? Well, inventory of property, because w whenever they seize property, they have to log it, what they, what they took, what they, what they are. Um, usually they're supposed to be backed up with, with photo evidence and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever else that they seized. But uh, all they seized was just the animals, not nothing else. The Sheriff, Sheriff Department took everything else. They called a uh, paraphernalia. Okay, so they did take some type of paraphernalia. Was it weapons yeah. or? Okay, okay, um, all right, they, all right. They took a bunch of potisas, espuela plástica, plastic okay. spurs. Um, yes. I'm going to tell you something funny, too. Um, in my bag... I have, because, you know, we, we clip up our birds, you know, to saddle and all that. Right. Um, so I had a right. little pair of scissors that looked like a crane, and they're real small to get around the legs. Um, right. And then the, the news said that them things was used as, as a weapon to make the, that they, we made the birds fight with uh, scissors. With a pair of scissors on his leg. See with, what I'm saying? With a pair of scissors. That, that, that is the reason why you cannot go and look online and see what these people are charged with and base, base your decision on them based upon what they charge with. Now, because if somebody looked online 
and say, oh, what is Chris, Chris being charged with? Oh, he's, he's, he's being charged with having metal blades or something like that. And you didn't have any metal blades. They'd have been talking about a pair of scissors that was not even used as a weapon. It was a pair of scissors. But they would have charged you on your court records on public information. I look up your records. It's going to state that you've been charging, and it, the paraphernalia included, some metal blades. And a metal blades would have been a pair of scissors. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that was interesting because I'm going to try to I'm gonna find my paper. Uh, so I can show you more or less what they should be showing you. Okay. So the first thing you ask for is the affidavit for the search warrant. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it there for a second so the camera can kind of, it's kind of getting readjusted. It ain't, it ain't completely adjusted, but so, so Chris, just tell us what we're looking at because it's not 100% clear. Okay, your, your affidavit for search warrant is what led up. That, that's what the officer, they had to build up enough probable cause, go to the judge and, and tell the judge, you know, uh, through their investigation, this is what they've concluded and they believe somebody's either going to commit an act or, or the actor has already been, been uh, committed, and that's how they secure their search warrant. It's going to give you details of the, the area where the house is at. Um, you know, like, like in our, our affidavit, it said that they, uh, they watched the house for a couple days, um, they seen single individual. This is what they use as probable cause now. This is their reason to go in. Uh, individual cages, which we know we know we, we, we can't keep the birds together. So, I mean, we had, we had about right. 100 of them, individual cage birds. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a black tarp that we use, like a privacy fence for our fences and stuff. They use right. that as a probable cause. Right. They said that that's used to, to cover up uh, illegal activity. And then uh, the interesting okay. one was an illegally built structure. Now, was a structure built illegally? Yeah, but the thing with that is that that is not, you know, a criminal matter. That's a code enforcement matter, but they right. use that as a way to get in, and that's something that, you know, we caught on a little bit later. You know, we said that's a code enforcement problem. That's right. You know, so that's really accusing us. So, <laughs> no, no, but, but this information is, and listen, this information is jewels right here because that's a very valid point. They use a code enforcement violation as a justification as part of, as part a justification to obtain a search warrant because it was an illegally built structure which is a code enforcement yep. violation they never sent code enforcement to your house three or four days ago to evaluate the structure to ask you if you got a permit for the structure or anything like that to inspect the structure anything they just looked at mm -hmm. the structure now none of those people are uh code enforcement so is there anybody that was actually uh, qualified enough um, to even say that it was a legally built structure? Like, did you have anything from code enforcement, a part of the affidavit that's saying, hey, we got this from code enforcement, from the looks of it, from the street, code enforcement said that that looks like an illegal structure, or there's no records on file stating that he obtained a permit to build that structure. So none of that stuff was a part of the warrant. No. All I said was illegally built structure. Okay, Chris, so tell me this. So, did you get the affidavit of the warrant after they did the uh, uh, raid, or did they bring that with them? Or is the affidavit something no. that you requested to get it? Something I requested after. Uh, it'll come within your discovery. It, it's going to tell you what happened, like, you know, was raided on the 26th. So, your affidavit mm -hmm. is going to let you know what happened two days prior, a month prior, depending on when all this initiated, you know, because it has to stem from somewhere. So your affidavit is mm -hmm. going to go from day one, what started this process, the legal process, mm -hmm. for them to, mm -hmm. you know, secure the search warrant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your, your, your okay, so you got that. Story line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Chris, you have another document there you wanted to show us, too. Show us that other document. Okay. I think inventory slip so, or something like that. So, yeah. So whenever they, they do the raid, you're not going to get a search warrant inventory at the time, but you could you could do it later through a... Through, uh, uh, public record search, or you can do it if you have a lawyer through a discovery. So here, they're going to date it, sign it. They're going to tell you what they found. You could probably see there 83 roosters, mm -hmm. uh, black bag, uh, electronic timer. It's got, it's got a, a whole bunch of stuff on there. You okay. Know, sticks, okay. And what is, is the, that again? The glue. The glue. Okay. And what is that? That's, at? So, it's a search warrant inventory and return. 
Okay, search warrant inventory in return. Now, is that something that the animal control should have also had or no? Um, probably not. They had to do their own because this is done through the sheriff department. But if they were smart, you know, to cover themselves, they'd at least have this to show that the sheriff department, you know, because the, the sheriff department directs them to, to kill the birds. So if they were smart, they would have first got the proper documentation to make sure that they was able to, you right. know, to cover themselves. Right. So now whenever I ask for a documentation, they have absolutely nothing. So where did you get this order from? Who gave it to you? Oh, uh, ag, the ag sergeant did. Where's it on paper? I don't have That's it. That's right. It looks bad on their part. You know, I mean, it's, it, That's right. I mean, it's aggravating because I wanted a document, but you know, in the long run, it, it helps you. It really does help you. It does help you. Because it shows you that they are gun ho They like the wild, wild west. And that's only because we never make them pay the price for their mistakes. When you make people pay the price for their mistakes, they think long and hard the next time they're going to go and kick down somebody's door or run up to yep. somebody's yard. But since we have put up almost zero resistance, they come in here and handle us any kind of way. And it's a cookie cutter strategy, state by state, city by city, county by county, parish by parish. They treat all of us the exact same way because they always get the exact same response. I'll take a plea deal. I'm not going to ask for no affidavit. I'm not going to ask for no inventory sheet. I'm not going to ask for nothing. I'm just going to ask for what are you offering me? Now, I'm not saying don't ask for that. But, hey, what's wrong with asking for all the documentation? Maybe once you get all that documentation, maybe you might feel a little bit more comfortable and saying that plea deal you offer me is actually not as good as I wanted it to be because I got the documentation and your case is trash. So now yep. you better give me the, you know, now you can go to them and say, you better give me the diversion program versus five years because your case is trash. You don't have no documentation. You don't ruin the evidence. The birds look like, you know, you can't prevent, you know, you can't supply the evidence. I mean, you can start breaking it all down. I think with this education that you're giving us, if we was to do that, we will walk around with at least a little bit. We'll walk around with a lot more confidence, not saying like you just said, it does not say that it's going to keep us out of jail. It does not say right. that we're not going to get raided. It does not say that they're not going to kill any of our birds. But what it does say and what you're telling, what you're shining light on is the fact that when you educate yourself, you get a sense of confidence. At least you know what's kind of yeah. what's going on. It's not like you showed up the first day at the job. We all know we show up the first day at the job. You, we're not 100% confident. I don't care how long you've been doing it. If it's a new it could be the same forklift you've been driving at the last 10 companies. But with this new company, you're still not going to feel 100% confident. But once you get educated on how the things operate, mm -hmm. you feel a lot more comfortable. You're a lot more <clears throat> confident. And I think if anybody get anything out of this whole situation is at least the ability to know where to search to gain a little bit of confidence on what they're dealing with. I mean, don't that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, there's nothing better. It's like if I fall into this situation now, um, there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff I'd, I'd probably do a little bit different, you know, because even though I asked for a search warrant and I asked for order destruction and I even, you know, told them, I said, you can't kill the animals because I don't have a due process. Um, they still killed them. Right. So by me even mentioning right. that, they didn't care. But I know that they was in the wrong. So, I mean – you have to kind of allow them to make that mistake. And I mean, it's hard to watch them put, you know, kill them birds. Right. But, you know, that's you right. You got to look at the long, you got to look in the long run. You know, this, this is, that's why we're here today doing this right now, you know, because we got to start bringing that's the fight right. to them. You that's know, right. We, we got to get educated, unify, and, um, you that's know, right. just your, your, your basics. They come into your property. Right. You don't have a search warrant, mm -hmm. get going. Okay. Right. Um, I mean, there, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff that comes with this and it's not that hard, you know, um, I didn't graduate high school. I dropped out in the 11th grade, never went to college. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not a dumb guy, mm -hmm. but I'm not the smartest either. You know, uh, my mm -hmm. memory is really bad, <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, I had to learn and I had to learn, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what you should do mm -hmm. because, you know, we, we, we want to preserve these birds. We want to do all this stuff. And that's perfectly great, but you got to make sure you can keep mm -hmm. them out of the hands of the animal rights activists and, you know, these, these, these crazy officers we got out here, you know, just, that's right. they, they, they trump all over your constitutional rights. You know, they That's might not right. listen to That's you. Right. And, and mm -hmm. another good thing is that now we have a lot of body cams. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we have other incidents that's been happening here in our in our county. 
So we're doing what we call 119s. You know, it's okay. uh, it's everything that, that has to do with that case, even if it's a call. So um, I'm going to give you an example. Like we, we had a, a gentleman that we know, um, like 87, 89 years old. Um, his neighbor called the cops saying that uh, that his daughter was over there at the house, at the old man's house, and that she was dead, that she overdosed on pills, and the guy was trying to hide the body and whatnot. Um, so the caller was, was high on some kind of drugs. It was hallucinating. So um, mm -hmm. the officers went to the house, made contact with the guy, and asked him, hey, where's the girl? And the gentleman says, there's, there's no girl here. And he says, no, no, we, we know she's here. Quit lying. And he says, y'all are crazy. So he turned around mm -hmm. and kept walking. He went back into his house. So uh, one of the officers decided to jump the fence. So he went in and jumped the fence. And, um, and this is what we're seeing through body cam. You know, and um, so while the officer's walking towards the house, he's saying, I'm going to put this guy in jail. I'm going to arrest him. Mm. That, that right there is already a problem. He had no reason to even be in the property. You know, there wasn't enough probable mm -hmm. cause because all the guy said it was an accusation. You know what I mean? You can see the guy was mm -hmm. high on something. Mm -hmm. So they went ahead mm -hmm. and, um, you know, grabbed the old man and, and started telling him, where's the girl? Quit lying. And, uh, and then mm -hmm. the first officer that, that went in that said he was going to arrest him, he seen the, the roosters. So then he says, oh, that's why he didn't want to let us in. He's a cockfighter. So you see how mm. one thing evolves into another. So That's and, uh, right. and that same and that same officer that went in there, he's he used to be animal control. He's the guy that killed our birds. So now he's an officer. Wow. So imagine how imagine wow. how much worse he is now with with, with a gun and a bag. That's right. That's and, right. Um, That's right. So they searched the guy's house, started asking questions about the birds. Why do you have the birds? And, you know, he says, I just like him. How many birds do you have? Oh, maybe thirty. And they say, Oh, what do you do? You eat them? And uh, he's like, yeah, I eat some. And then they started laughing, you know. They said, yeah, I bet that you eat them. Um, so they went ahead and left, right? That's the end of the story. So um, then we made contact with him because I heard it through his son, you know, and another friend of mine that, uh, that they went into the guy's property. So I did a 119 public record request, and that gives you everything. But you got to be specific about body cam and, uh, you know, uh, the affidavit or, you know, call logs. Why are they there? So... Mm -hmm. Whenever we did that, you know, we found out that the next following day that an ag deputy went over there to do a follow-up. So they closed the, the, the case of the girl missing. There was no girl missing. So that case was closed off. But then what it did, it evolved into another one, something that was, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's like uh, fruits from the poisonous tree, you know, that was trying mm -hmm. to obtain evidence. So now the issue with that is if they try to come in, which the sheriff department now, they know that we have the body cam and we have, you know, all the documentation. So they already know mm -hmm. that the gig is up. You know, they screwed up. Right. They know that. Right. So we ask for the, for the report. They have to give you a report, you know, a CAD number. There's no report. And we make wow. sure they're all on email. So everything you do, do it by email. Documentation. Document, document, document. You call somebody, you okay. write down the name, uh, everything. And, uh, That's right. So we found out now that, that they're trying to open up an investigation on uh on the old man <laughs> you know so so by us doing that doing that 119 mm -hmm. um they know they cannot do nothing to him because they went onto the property illegally they had no right to be on the property the guy the old man never gave him you know never agreed for them to be on there so now and they didn't uh, have a warrant the, no warrant no warrant. right all it was was a pro the, there was enough probable cause all it was the guy said i heard my daughter i didn't see her i didn't this and um you know, and that's how they, they thought that they could just do it. We're just going to jump the property or jump over mm -hmm. the fence. And um, so we, we got the documentation, and we've seen that, uh, that those doing a follow-up report and that the officer already was trying to open up an investigation. So once we did that and we did the 119, you know, you kind of put a stop to them because once, once the officers know that you're not, a, you're not a dummy and you know a little bit of right. something, they already right. know what you're gunning for. You're going you're gonna to try to get them, you know, and, 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 I mean, put it to them. So if they try to arrest the, that old man now, they're going to have a big problem because they obtained mm -hmm. evidence illegally already. So you can't use uh, illegal evidence or illegally obtained evidence to charge somebody because then what it's going to do is going to get thrown out of court. You know, the, the fruit right. of the poisonous tree. So that's why, right. um, why we explain to the old man, every time you have any interaction with law enforcement, do a 119. Even if you think that it's not going to show anything, that's where we learned that there was a follow-up investigation that derived from mm -hmm. that one. And mm -hmm. we all thought, well, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll leave him alone. 
But you know what? Mm -hmm. I said, cops don't sleep. They work 24 7. 24 7. Their job is to get us. That's right. That's right. So, so tell me something, Chris. So, in your county, in your state, in your jurisdiction, to request a public record, it's called a 119? Yes. Okay. So, guys, remember um, that's just in Chris State, Chris County. Chris uh, jurisdiction there is called the 119. I don't know what it's called yeah. in your state, your county, your parish, your jurisdiction, but I'm pretty sure you can Google it or call down. Can, can they call down to the courthouse and ask what a public record like? How did you learn about about getting a public record like that? Well, um, I did it before at a county just for for local stuff, and um, mm-hmm. so what I did, I called the. Well, I called, well, whenever I went to the sheriff department, I, was, I called them to go back to the birds. Um, I wanted a property receipt from them, and that's where I mm-hmm. wanted the order of destruction, and they told me that they didn't have it. Mm-hmm. So then that's how I got kind of familiar because I called, and I, I, I mean, I called the wrong number quite a few times. Then they asked me what right. was I looking for, and I, I was told I was trying to obtain records on my, on my, on my arrest. And then they went right. and they transferred me over to the public records, and then that's how I got into that and got all my okay, records. Okay, so – even. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so, so that's how you learned about it. So you kind of almost like through your investigation and your determination to get some answers. That's how you learn about the public records request. Yeah. So, so tell it me, sucks, but you got to do it. <laughs> but no, no, no. But you know what? It sucks the first time around. But after the first time around, then it, it ain't that big of a deal the second time around because you already know what you're walking into. So you're not going to get like frustrated. Said, you're not going to be impatient because you already know what to expect. So, yeah, it's frustrating the first time. But it's great to find this information out prior to needing it instead of mm-hmm. needing it. And now you're going through the process of trying to figure out what is called your county, your town, your jurisdiction. If you know what a public records request is labeled, as you can find that out prior uh, beforehand, let me see here. Sometimes they try to interrogate you when you ask for. Okay, uh, uh, Mark from Texas is saying that uh, sometimes they try to interrogate you when you ask for a PPR. <laughs> so explain to us what he's talking about. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. The same old, the gentleman we're talking about, his son went to go record to record. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> request request <laughs> the records, and um, they gave him the runaround. So what they did, they provided him uh, a call log. Because they already know what he's asking for. He's asking for the, you know, mm-hmm. the nail that's going to seal the coffin on them. So then what that's they did, right. they directed him to the sergeant, which is the ag deputy, the same one that was in our case, the one that, uh, okay. that had our animals killed. Killed the bird. So, right. Yeah. So what they do, they try to deter you. So, and then what happens, once you do these public records requests, once it has to do with officers, it's like here in our county, our 119, before you could even obtain it, the sheriff has to view what is it, what information you're trying to obtain, and he has to sign off on it. So he knows who you are and what you're asking for, which I think that me personally, I believe that's good for our case because he already knows us. Right. He knows who we are. So whenever we ask for that, he knows where we're trying to go with that. Okay, so tell me this. Um, is there any legal process – I mean, is there any either legal or lawful reason – he cannot provide it to you? No. No, that, that's it's public records. The only thing that they could do, um, if there's any uh, personal information, they'll redact it off of it. Um, certain things, it's not going to be everything. Um, like if mm-hmm. uh, there's a confidential informant anywhere, if anything comes in within that, they have to redact that to where you don't obtain that number. Um, but, you know, that's, that, they're not supposed to withhold any of that information. You know, what, whenever it's too early, like if you get arrested today, you try to obtain something tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit hard because, you know, the process of, of them processing all the papers and getting everything in. Mm-hmm. It might take a week or two. Um, right. But you should be able. And it's like uh, the, the gentleman I was talking about, the old man, um, I requested it for that. So mm-hmm. it's not like you could only request for your own information. You could, you could request any case, you know, any information. It's, it's public. Got you. Got you. Got you. Mm-hmm. So that that that's okay. So that's great. So tell me something. I know, Chris, we talked about. Um, you were saying, I guess you kind of explained that with the old man. Like if you can, is, is it, I know you said something about you can request some information to see something about an investigation that they're going through and they got to provide it to you. Or did I hear that wrong? 
You talking about the the, the follow up investigation? Yes, that, oh, that's what you were talking about, the follow-up investigation. Yeah. So when you request yeah. that public record stuff, you can kind of see where they're going with it, right? Yeah, because once, once you ask, like, let's say your house is 824 Main Street. Okay, whenever you ask for, mm -hmm. for all records that has to do with 824 Main Street, um, usually you want to have a specific date because if not, they're going to give you everything. Or sometimes you want to do it. You know, it would be good to get everything that you could obtain. Um, you either ask mm -hmm. for everything that has to do with, with that property or just a specific occasion. Right. So um so we asked for that that certain day, and then um once we asked for for that for that property, then that's where the other report came in that we didn't even have no clue that that was even going to be put in there. So we didn't even know that there was a follow up. So that's why it's very wow. important to do a complete to do a complete follow through. You know, you follow through with it because from from one incident that had nothing to do with anything. You know, as a, a guy was high on drugs hallucinating, it it started you know converting over into an investigation for uh, cockfighting. Right, right. And when you got that and other report, that's when you seen that they went out there and did a follow-up trying to build a whole new case based upon what they legally saw the first time they went out there. Yeah. Yeah, which is uh, his son actually obtained that whenever he went to the sheriff's department because um, whenever you have uh, interaction with officers like that, you always want to go make a complaint. Log it. Because then as soon as you log it, it's showing that you had a problem with that department. You know, and he even showed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the old man's son even showed the, the officer, you know, or the people there, you know, they cut, they cut our lock because they even cut the lock to the gate and uh, went in there and everything. And uh, he's just, oh, it's just a damn link. You know, it ain't no big deal. It is a big deal. It is a very big right. deal. That's right. You know, very because if you was a criminal, if you was a criminal and you cut that lock and went into somebody, uh, went into my yard, they would arrest you. They wouldn't say, oh, I'm not going to arrest you because it's just a little link and it's not a big deal. What are you talking about? It don't even have to be locked. If I open up somebody's gate, it could just be there. If I enter to somebody's property, regardless if it's a link chain, a padlock, or no lock yep. at all, it's still illegal, correct? Absolutely. That's going to be one of the most expensive links that they've ever seen in their life. <laughs> keep, it, keep, it as, keep it as a trophy. <laughs> Put it on a necklace. <laughs> so tell me this, Chris. I mean, it's been some extremely great information. Um, so, so you never got, now let's get back on track. Cause I know it's a lot of information that we're trying to cover. So you, you was offered your last plea deal of animal cruelty. You refused to take the plea of animal cruelty. What happened after that? Well, whenever they did the, the animal cruelty, that's whenever they went back into the original deal of the, the, the diversion program. They offered okay. that to us again. Okay. We turned it down. So at that point, we wasn't 48 strong no more. We might have been maybe 20. Okay. And, uh, along the line, we, we started, people started dropping like flies. You know, like I said, okay. I, I'm not going to knock them for it. You know, everybody has different situations, but. That's right. That's um, right. That's, that's you know, their decision. That, it, it happens. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, we have to respect it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so then from there, um, they try to play the hardball with this. And they said, we'll just go back to the original charges, the third degree uh, felony, um, mm -hmm. spectator and baiting. So mm -hmm. then from there, whenever we got closer to the end, it was probably about a couple weeks later, um, they offered us a illegal congregation, illegal assembly. And hmm. well, I mean, once we, heard, once we heard that, we're like, how the hell are we illegally assembled on a private property? You know, that's a First Amendment violation right there on its own. You know, you're, you're trying to get me to, to take a charge against the Constitution. You know, it's like, huh? Right. It's just how dumb they are. You know, they didn't even understand. Right. You know, these are supposed to be state attorneys. You know, and, and right. that's why we're going to keep saying education is very important because there's nothing better than looking eye to eye with that state attorney or even with your lawyer, you know, and calling it BS mm -hmm. and say, man, what's right. wrong with you? You know, right. we're, we're way that's ahead right. of them. We're a step ahead of them. That's right. That's right. And they're trying yeah. to get you to plead, plead guilty to a violation of your First Amendment. Yep. <laughs> So yeah. what happens after that, Chris? That's that to me oh. it sounds crazy, but it just shows you their opponent typically will take it because yeah. they have zero knowledge, not just a bit. The average cocker has zero knowledge. They know more about bloodlines and farms and everything else and have zero knowledge about that. And I'm guilty also of it. My knowledge is very, very, very limited. So Again, when I talk to you yeah. about it, I'm like, dude, you got to come on the show because I know if I don't know a lot of this stuff, there's a whole bunch of other people that don't know a lot of this stuff also. So they, they ask you to plead guilty 
uh, 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 to a charge that violated your First Amendment and you told them what? Well, we told them no. We told them absolutely okay. not. You know, and um, and then from there, um, they reduced the, well, they kept the illegal congregation, but the fine that they want us to give some money to some uh, animal rights people. Oh, man, Chris conked out. Okay, let's see here. Yep. Okay. He's coming back in, guys, so stay tuned. He's For some reason, he came out. Okay. All right, good. Back. So, so, right. so, they, so they came back to you after that, you know, after y'all guys yep. said, no, I'm not taking that. And what did they say next? Um, what they did, the fines that they wanted us to give to the Animal Rights Society and stuff, they, uh, it was like at 500, they reduced it down to like 200, and then it went down to 100. So, you know, the original charge of uh, the illegal congregation stayed, um, and uh, then the, the money started coming down. And then they're saying that they're going to do something with the charge to where it's almost like, it's almost like a traffic infraction. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, why wow. We, for one, give up money. You know, plea out to a constitutional right that we have. So right. Then, uh, <laughs> so we refused it. So then we went. We uh, we went to the our last day before they had to set us off to trial. So that day, you know, our lawyer didn't look too hot. You mm -hmm. know, I'd say this how this how nasty these these scumbag lawyers get. Right. Um, That's right. We went outside and he was talking to all of us, and. Uh, you know, this guy doesn't smoke or nothing, but that day he smoked, he smoked a cigarette. And, I mean, he sucked it down quick, and he was just shaking and looking around. I mean, we knew something was wrong with him. So uh, after he finished smoking a cigarette, he looked at us. He says, y'all have to take a deal. We're like, what? And it surprised us. We didn't expect that. You know, he's a federal lawyer. Very well known. Wow. I mean, very well respected. And he says, I can't afford for y'all to serve five years in prison, you know, over chicken and this and that. And, um I tell you, it heated us, heated us up pretty good. Um, so, you know, I had to stop and think about it because, you know, I don't want to act out of anger. So right. I stopped and, I, and um, you know, and then in the courthouse, we can't bring our cell phones. So I walked out to my truck and uh, and I called Bill Kozad and I talked to Jim Demerell. They helped me through this whole thing. You know, the same because mm -hmm. of me, they helped me a lot. I mean, right. more than they should have. Right. So, um, right. so I asked them, I said, look, there's a situation we're in. They already knew where my stance was. You know, but it's like it's, it's always good to have somebody to talk to. So uh, so mm -hmm. I just told them what was going on and stuff. And they said, hey, it's your life. You do whatever you want. Um, you know, they said, it's in your hands. So, you know, so I had to stay true to what I said from the get-go. I said, I started this fight, and we're going to go all the way to the end, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back to where the lawyer was, and I told the lawyer, I said, look, I said, uh, we paid you to represent re represent us. And, and at the time, I said, I was speaking for myself. And mm -hmm. uh you know, and that's why I said, you know, we, we just jury trial. Let's go. Right. Get the date and let, let let's keep it keep it moving. And right. um, and some of the, the some of the other guys that was there with us, it was kind of like, eh. but I have a real good friend of mine that he stuck with me from beginning mm -hmm. to end, and he told me, hey, mm -hmm. he says you sure? And I said, mm -hmm. yeah, man. I said I'm gonna do it. He says I'm with you. So he told uh he told the lawyer, he says hey, he says I'm with them. So the lawyer started laughing. He says, oh, Chris, Raphael. Y'all demand a jury trial. Okay. So he started making fun of us. Mm -hmm. Went inside. 20 minutes later, charges dropped. They dropped the charges. That then, is... <laughs> the, then the lawyer came outside and told us, hey, look what I did. I said, man, we he didn't do you shit. Wear you out. No, we told him we should have wore him out right there in that courtyard. Because first he... he That's you know, right. If, if we would have been just a little bit, a little bit of a... Uh, you know, just scared or whatever they want to call it. I don't even know what's mm -hmm. the word for it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we would have took a deal, you know. Yeah. But um, that's why it's very important. You know, if, if you commit to something, you got to stick with it. Because if we would have took that plea deal, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. And I would have not. That's right. You know, it, it, it would have, it you know, my morale would have went down. And then the second yep. time would have been even easier to plea out. Because most of the guys that was uh, arrested with us, they've been arrested multiple mm -hmm. times. And they've always mm -hmm. took plea deals. Like I said, I don't knock nobody mm -hmm. for it. But, um, right. Then the rest of the guys that pled out, they told us, this is, oh, why don't, why don't we get the same thing? So this y'all pled out. Y'all, y'all surrendered your rights. You know? That's right. That's right. That's right. And you took a deal and I got mine dismissed only because I stood firm. And, and tell me this. So when you went out to the truck, you called BL 
and 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 Jim, and yeah. uh, uh, um, and I know you have talked about it before, and and um, I just kind of wanted to just make sure the fact that because you said you have learned a lot from them, and um, do so. Do you feel as though what you learn from them in your situation, just in your situation, when you're talking about your situation, you yeah. do feel as though that the information that you learned from them was actually good information and it helped you in your case? Absolutely. Um, B.O. And, uh, and Jim, they actually came down to Miami, and we had a, we had a get-together out there at a, one of the parks, Tropical Park, actually, probably three mm -hmm. years before we was arrested, and we kind of did a, bi a big thing out there. We had some guy, a friend of ours, Manano, out of Miami, helped us get it all together, get the tents and stuff, and we actually <laughs> mm -hmm. well, we put up the tent right across from the Humane Society. <laughs> you know? What? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we have so a lot, tell me, a lot so of tell me this. walking by us. I know. They, I, I bet you they was all looking <laughs> crazy. But tell me this, Chris. Did, 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 is, was there any repercussions to the sheriff department or animal control or anything for all those mistakes that they made? Or they just went, been brushed under the rug and just kept it moving? Well, it, it, it got brushed under the rug for the moment. So um, right now... Um, we have multiple lawsuits set against them, and uh, we're in the thing Great. of, uh, you know, the money and stuff. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to give us, like, $15 a bird. And we're trying to explain to them, you know, this is not just your ordinary bird. You know? Right. So that's what the insurance right. company is trying to do. You know, they, 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 they label every chicken the same, so it's just a chicken. No, it's not just any chicken. It's just, a, you know, a car isn't just any car. You know, they have different makes and models, and they perform different. That's right. And, uh, that's right. That's so, right. You know, so now, now we're moving over into the civil Part. And it's like the same thing, like the, the gentleman I was telling you about, that the cops jumped his fence and, and uh, right. started up that follow-up report. Um, we're working on that now. You know, so um, okay. the best thing to do is, is by us having that, we get to watch all the body cam. Because you remember, there's multiple officers, and people are seeing different things with different angles. So as you watch right. different videos from each body cam, you're going to learn something, something that they did wrong or something they said. And, uh, right. and once you go to a civil lawyer, you already know everything through and through. You don't want to give it to the lawyer. And then watch it with them. You really want to have a heads up and be ahead of him. So then if, mm -hmm. if they try to say something, you call BS on it and say, no, 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 no. Right, right, right. So, again, it goes back to the education aspect because a lot of Absolutely. these attorneys haven't dealt with this situation. And even the ones that have dealt with the situation, they're so used to cockers just game fire breeze taking plea deals. They don't expect you really to know nothing. Like you're at their mercy. That, that, that's what they expect, you know. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, from the get-go, I wasn't smart in law at all. I mean, I didn't. But, you know, and, and uh, fortunately, I got to meet uh, uh, Bill Kozad and, and Jim Demerill, you know, and, um, and I purchased a USB, mm -hmm. and I read all the case laws. And I mean, it's a little bit difficult, but um, if your heart's in it, right. you're going to learn it. You know, and I just stayed with it. I mean, uh, I always called him and asked him a lot of questions, and, you know, he always answered them. You know, there, there came a time that he mm -hmm. told me, hey, man, you know, you got to kind of like, you know, just kind of like – get get off of me and start doing your own stuff you know and i kind of took it like <laughs> he, he tried, he's blowing me off but he, you know but, uh, you know because i you know i was out there want to learn you know i want to go out there and kick ass stuff and I, um you know whenever he did right. that it actually helped me you know i went out and i said well you know i said i'm just got to learn it and and you know and i just misunderstood what right. i was doing at the time and uh you know what i mean uh and, and, and it worked out i mean um he, he has a lot of great information you know, and it's like we keep saying, you know, it's like um, this whole cockfight problem is like cancer. You know, mm -hmm. it's like cancer. Chemo doesn't cure at all. I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, could it work? Yeah, it, it can work. Can it not right. work? Well, it, it might. You know, I mean, there's different circumstances for certain things. You know, it's just like right. I said. Um, I asked for, for the search warrant. I asked for order destruction, but they still kill my birds. Mm -hmm. That's why we're in That's the lawsuit right. right now. So I'm saying, even if I was to right. use it, 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 it might have helped me. It might not have. But mm -hmm. in this case, if, if officers mm -hmm. and the law and the court system, if they want to screw you, they're going to do it. They don't care who you go in there with or what you bring to the table right. or even, you know, certain case laws. But, um, you right. know, um, well, what it helped me do was combat them. You know, like uh, you do processes, right. you know, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of your civil rights. I mean, there's a ton of good information mm -hmm. in there, a ton of good information. And that's that's where I learned all my right. stuff from, you know. And then wow. You, you go off and you search your, your, your own stuff, you know, at least especially locally. It's good to know right. your local laws. That's what's greatly going to affect right. you. But the Constitution is the law of the land. You know, that's right. That's where it all comes that's from. That's right. That's right.
That's right. That's exactly right. That's it. Hey, well, Chris, I tell you what, man, you dropped some bombs tonight, man. I, I, I tell you what, we have a lot of views. I can say that right now. And I promise you uh, that a lot more people is going to watch this because you open up a lot of people's eyes. And, and I'm glad you ended it with that same, you know, I'm glad you ended it with that part. Like you say, if they're going to screw you, they're going to screw you, regardless of you bringing 55 case laws in there, USB and all that. At the end of the day, if they're going to screw you, they're going to screw you. But what it does do it does allow you to put up some type of fight, some type of fight, and it actually allows you to also expose some of their weaknesses. So at the end of the day, you know, um, it doesn't mean you're going to guarantee win, but it means you're going to go down swinging instead of just bending mm -hmm. over, grabbing your ankles. Like majority of the time, everybody just bending <laughs> over, grabbing their ankles. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, wow, you know, at least if I'm going to get knocked out, I want to be throwing a punch when I get knocked out. Not just, you know, with my hands down to my side and saying, knock me out. So, again, none of that stuff is guaranteed. We already know in this country, everybody does not respect the Constitution. The vast majority of the politicians don't respect the Constitution. The, the average American don't even care about the Constitution until it's violated something on them. But they don't care about no other part of the Constitution. And they only care about the part that hurts them or that applies to them. So, listen, that, that is the reality of it. And that's what happened to me. You know, I met Jim in a, a BO three years prior. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I spent three years kind of lollygagging around, you know, eating crap, um, read a little bit here, read a little bit there. And then whenever I had to get put in a bad situation to then want to mm -hmm. pick up all the case laws and start picking up everything off right. that USB and start reading, 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 because I became desperate. I said, shit, I can't get in this kind of problem. <laughs> you know, I got a lot right. to lose. That's right. So it's That's don't, right. don't, don't let yourself get in that bad situation. Don't, don't let yourself get into that bad situation, you know. Right. Because if, if I would, them three years, if I was dedicated to actually – put my head into it the day of the raid there would have been a lot of stuff i would have probably done different now would it have changed See? the outcome probably maybe maybe not but uh um, right but that's something i have to live with but, you know but right. from, from all that that i've learned this is why i'm here right now we have a lot of this stuff going on you know it's like in, in our civil case that we have right now you know 99.9 percent .9 of it was put together by by me and, uh, and a couple guys that work with us you know we, we have a pretty good team of people that we we work with each other we consolidate with each other you know i'll consolidate and speak a lot with wow. um with jim and bl so you know so we share a right. lot of good information and um you know we right. dropped basically our whole case in a lawyer's lap you know and he he, he was wow. surprised you know because he right. said well, he, he calls us the clubhouse lawyers <laughs> <laughs> that's what he calls them man y'all make good clubhouse lawyers but you know but we're smart we're getting sharp you know and um you right know, the thing is like these, these animal rights activists they know that a majority of us, you know, we, we, we don't try to learn the law too much. You know, that's, that's right. That's the sad part about it. But, you know, one of the things that they need to understand, you know, we're, we're coming together, we're uniting, we're getting a lot of knowledge. You know, in this mm -hmm. fight, we're going to bring it to the front of the door. Mm -hmm. One fight at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's time for us. You know, we're at the bottom of the bucket. It's like here in Florida. You know, it's a third-degree felony punishable by five years. You know what's the only thing left that they could do to you is kill you. There's nothing else more that they mm -hmm. can do to you. <laughs> that's the last thing that what? the cops can do to you is kill you. I mean, it's already, uh, it's already a felony. <laughs> That's right. Wow. So it's like, you know, it's at the bottom. We're at the bottom of the bucket. So it's like, you know, all we can do is go up. We can't go no further down. We can't go no further down. That's what I've been saying. They have taken so many our rights away. It ain't really nothing left that they can take because they done made almost everything illegal. I mean, with, with yeah. trimming birds, how can trimming birds be illegal when we know trim, birds with crests get frostbite? So how can that be an illegal action, which that's actually can be a health issue for them? You know what I'm saying? Like frostbite can get infected, can get an a, a infection in the blood. The birds can. So so they have gotten to the point where we have put up zero resistance and they have just started finding stuff to make illegal. How can you make trimming a bird illegal? That is just well, bananas. You, you got to kind of look at it. You know, you could get a little furry dog. You could shave him bald. There's no problem right. with that. You get a bird and you trim them up. That's right. Oh, man. That's right. Watch out. Watch out. That's exactly you know, right. That's exactly I mean, but just right. How, just how that person has the same right that they have to, to, to shave their dog down and have the same right to trim mm -hmm. my bird, dub him, you know, yep. do what I feel yep. I want to do with him. That's right. That's exactly and, and, right. And, and you know, that. but you know, that's 100% right. And it's so funny because about eight or nine years ago, I was telling people uh, about, you know, um, working with guys training dogs. I said, why don't y'all use a treadmill? Oh, we don't use treadmills because, you know, only people use dog treadmills is, is the dog guys who fight their dogs. But yet now, almost 10 years later, 
You have police departments that have treadmills for their dogs. And it's so funny because when I said it years ago, everybody said, oh, well, we, what you, what you going to need a treadmill for? That, that's for dog fighting. It was illegal to even have. They had animal activists passing laws, yeah. and there is laws in certain states that a dog treadmill is considered par dog fighting paraphernalia. But in that same yeah. state, you will have a sheriff department that has a treadmill at the department, or at least at his house for his canine. So it shows yeah. you how contradicting it is. But the deal is, if you don't bring a lot of this stuff to their attention, and you just let them keep passing laws without even going down and waving your hand and saying, hold on, commission, before y'all pass this law, or before y'all vote on this, I mean, you got dogs who, who's running on treadmills that work for the police department. But again, it goes back to, like you said, about shaving a dog. How can trimming a bird is the intent to use them for an illegal activity? That is just yeah. crazy. I mean, both, you know, both, so, both owners have the right. You know, and it's like the thing with uh, paraphernalia. And I learned this actually from the, um, the lieutenant that's over the animal control. He helped us a lot. Didn't expect mm -hmm. it because I tell you, you know, um, there's good and bad law enforcement officers out there, you know. Right. And uh, was, was hesitant with this guy because we thought he was trying to entrap us or try to get something from us. Right. Uh, right. So uh, one of the things, you know, was he was talking about intent, what he wanted to educate us on because we was kind of throwing that word around. And mm -hmm. not, not in the right way. So he says, I'm going to give you a little bit of free knowledge. He says, uh, me, if I pull somebody over and, um, and I catch him with marijuana and I catch him with a glass pipe, usually right. most officers will hit him with a paraphernalia. But this is what makes a big difference. You, you, have, you have to do something illegal with that pipe. You might smoke tobacco. So what they're going to have to do is take a, red, take a test and prove that there was some illegal substance put into there and smoked out of it. So it's like he said, mm -hmm. you got birds, you have spurs. Mm -hmm. you haven't done nothing yet. You put it on the leg. And this is by him. You know, I don't agree with all of it, but, you know, this is, you know, he's giving me a view in, in an officer's mind. So mm -hmm. to make a long story short, what he believes when you violate the law is once that rooster strikes the other one with a spur, which I disagree with him on that. But that's the mindset of an officer. Wow. Wow. Well, see, that, that's, that's, a, that's still a yeah. jewel. Because, again, it still gives you an inside view of how they think, which I think is extremely important also. Not just falling in love with our own argument and our own perception of the situation is extremely important to try to understand how they're looking at things also. So, yeah. man, it's been, this, this has been awesome, dude. This, this has yeah. been awesome, man. You're going to have to come back on the show, man, and kind of update us and let us know, you know, how your situation is panning out with the civil suit. And also, yep. too, I'd like you to come on again and, and, and we can talk about any additional information that you have learned or, or maybe some cases mm -hmm. or people that you have assisted with down in Florida. I know you're a go to yeah. guy for a lot of the guys in Florida that's going to deal yep. with animal situations. Um, so I would like for you to come on to the show in the near future and talk about some additional information and also to educate some of the guys who didn't have an opportunity to watch tonight. Later on down the Absolutely. road, you know, we can we can kind of educate them, man. So listen, Chris, man, I greatly appreciate you coming on tonight. You have been a wealth of information. You have shined a light yeah. on a lot of different things. And uh, and I know everybody watching this have learned something. Period point blank. I know they have learned something, man. So again, man, I greatly appreciate you coming on tonight, man. Stay in touch. I'll keep you posted what's going on here in Puerto Rico, man. You and I will be continuing on talking like we has been. And uh, stay safe, man. Stay focused. Stay positive. Stay blessed, man. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, y'all. Yes, All right. sir.